Hey there guys, it's Metro and today we are back taking a look at Under Rot in the series where we do a post commentary on some interesting dungeon runs. We're going to start by trying to do one for every dungeon. I'm going to try to give you guys my thoughts on some of the interesting elements of the dungeon and especially this week we're going to be talking heavily about teaming because this is probably one of the hardest of fixes in the game now that trash is such a bigger problem and especially with the infested fix, uh, this can really add a lot of time to some of your dungeons. Now, if you watch this run live, which obviously is from the live stream, you would notice a bit of an argument that started before we even began the dungeon. And this was actually about what we should skip in the dungeon. We have a rogue who uh, wasn't seemingly uh, fully aware of how teaming actually works in this dungeon. And that's perfectly understandable because it is bizarre how it works. It basically, typically you'd have those big mobs that we just killed there. That one's infested. You'd have a couple of them throughout the dungeon. And on one side of these ramps, you'd have a couple extra. Typically, you'd skip that. Unfortunately, that's not an option on teaming. Both sides actually have an incredibly high amount of mobs. And they have that tiki mask mob, whatever, uh, you know, whatever you want to call that mob. An incredibly dangerous pack. You can kind of see it over my shoulder here as I'm looking around. Very, very, very high amount of mobs, and pretty much all of them are incredibly dangerous. So, we come to a very odd impasse here. The idea skip the mobs. That seems the blatant answer to a pack this big, a pack this dangerous, skip the mobs. And we did it to great effect earlier in the week and later in the week. But what I failed to account for was. If you die anywhere in this dungeon, you start back here. So if at any point anybody dies and we cannot battle res them or res them properly, it's over. We're done. The rogue is going to have to go all the way back and either shroud them or somehow get the person here again. They might have to die, death run. I don't even know. There's not a lot of options, honestly. And uh, I think they, they really pulled something diabolical here, man. They, they're they really twisting us with this one because they put arguably one of the hardest packs in the video game this early in the dungeon and there is no way to advance past it you have to kill it if at any point your group wipes or you have no you know no way to stay where you are in the group after in the dungeon after you die you're done you have to skip it again which either means using another invis pot which realistically is not possible or you know using shroud over and over again especially if you're wiping multiple times so our best answer here is to just try to cc some mobs we're, we're going to cc some mobs and you're going to see some interesting things on this pack but the first thing you're going to notice here is that this tiki mask mob is just going to obliterate us if you know how this i'm not sure how this works I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that it targets a player it see it's it's targeting me and it's going to splash onto people near me. So I'm hitting other people with it, and they're just getting destroyed uh, by this and other mechanics. Now, I'm not sure exactly if it splashes, but all I know is that beam hurts, and that mob is an incredibly dangerous mob. So we're kind of coming to the agreement here that you want to kill that mob as quick as possible. It's not going to be movable. It's not a mob that we could affect in any way. I, I don't think it can be stunned. A couple of people suggested that we try to stun it, but I'm not sure if we ever did try. And uh, yeah, I don't know. But I, all I do know is that mob is incredibly dangerous, but the mobs around it are no joke either. So we can't really just run in there, pop everything, and hope to burn it down. It's just not going to po be possible. And this is a week where there is no teaming, or there is no infested on this pack. Could you imagine if it was possible for infested to be on this pack, it would be absolutely nightmare level to the point where I don't think we would have been able to clear the dungeon. So uh, we're kind of just giving it another try, just saying, all right, let's just try to kill one mob. And I do think we end up doing that. Yes, we do. We kill the Tiki Mask. Now, the next time we pull this, you're going to see something very very interesting and uh, i kind of learned this by accident but it's something that kind of gets applied through a lot of dungeons we saw it a lot in freehold this week actually saw it a lot in arcway back in 7.x and uh, what happens here is it seems like maybe on purpose but certain mobs that get added in teaming do not tether to the pack properly so as you see i am going to grip that skull and watch what happens the other one does not come. Now, there's a couple reasons that this might have happened. We CC'd the mob in between them. I don't know if that's mandatory. If I grip the skull and the other mob in between the other big, big mob ran to me, would that aggro the second big mob? I don't know. But regardless, as you see here, we basically just split pull a pack of five. We CC'd three and one did not aggro. And now we could again just pull it solo and nothing else is coming because of the CC. So if you can pull this off, this is the way to do it. I don't really know how to replicate it. 
but I'm glad to have been able to share it with you because I think this is probably the only guaranteed way that you're ever going to be able to pull this pack and not get farmed by it. Now, of course, that's with the Tiki Mask dead. If you did all this and the Tiki Mask was still alive, you'd pretty much be in a, a no-win situation because you're going to have to kill that mob and realistically somebody's going to break some kind of CC along the way. You're not going to ever be fighting just one mob at a time in a pack like this. So, I don't know. I'm not really sure what to think. All I know is this pack is arguably one of the hard... I'd say it has to be one of the harder packs in the game and... It's so early in the dungeon that there's pretty much no way you're going to be able to skip it thanks to the way the dungeon's uh, res points are laid out to the, the fact that there are no res points. So that's really the quintessential difficulty of the dungeon, especially this week, is there's a lot of trash in here and uh, not a lot of it's avoidable, mostly because of the way the dungeon's designed with res points in mind. It's, it's almost like if it was an intentional element of the difficulty of the dungeon. Like, if this wasn't the case, this would be so much easier. It wouldn't eat... Like, if you just rezzed at the platform where you fight the first boss after you kill the first boss, which is arguably one of the easier bosses in the game, especially not on Tyrannical, the whole dungeon would be so much easier. It wouldn't even be funny, right? So, anyway, the boss itself doesn't really do anything. We talked about this a couple weeks ago, but uh, the bosses in some of these dungeons are really, really, really easy on Fortified. But when you do them on Tyrannical, which was last week and will be again next week, this boss especially gets a lot harder. So, I figure it might not be a bad idea to talk a little bit about this. A fight lasts so little time that it's hard to really get any uh, quality critique in, but the thing that you want to know is those ads that get spawned, typically people just either blow them up or just completely ignore them, and the boss, as you see, dies before it's even a problem. But the longer you go, the more problematic that ad becomes, and, and there's going to be two, and I haven't seen it, but maybe there's going to be three in the future. So. It's an example of a, of a soft enrage on a dungeon boss, which a lot of people on stream have been uh, vocalizing that they're not happy with at all. And I could totally understand that, but you know, I, I think again, these are these are some uh, big difficulty changes to the game in uh, 8.0 that's made five men's a lot harder. Now, this pack is, if if you're looking at this and you're like, why would you ever pull that? They nerfed the hell out of the bleed they do, but it still does a lot of damage as you see, and uh, we nearly don't recover from it, but. Regardless, these four, uh, these four mobs here, they, they're, they're pretty easy to kill on top of the, the little guys. You kill them quick. Then you got these four mobs. This is a big teaming pack, obviously. But yeah, you just avoid the breath. We got the weak ore for it, so pretty easy to dodge. And uh, that's pretty much it. Nothing crazy. If one of those mobs was infested, though, my god, that pack would be insane. Uh, you pretty much would have to CC. There'd be no way you could possibly deal with all that uh, while the mobs are healing up. So... And now, the next pack here is infested, and uh, it's in interesting because a lot of the mobs in here are not your conventional mobs. Uh, you know, you see a lot of humanoids, a lot of beasts in dungeons, things that mages, hexes, you know, uh, maybe even demon hunters, things like that could, could uh, CC pretty well. But these mobs are aberrations, I'm pretty sure. And uh, that is not something that you could deal with as pretty much anything but a warlock, to my knowledge. I guess Hunter could trap as well, but I don't know. We, we've kind of just been, you know, uh, we had this uh, discussion on um, whether or not it's even worth CCing. I think it is always worth CCing because, uh, first of all, what just happened there? We, we were ineffective at killing the mobs. That's, that's poor play, and it only happened because we did not CC. Uh, but the other thing I think is, you know, people are, are, are tending to use CDs on the pull. And if you're going to pull five mobs and one of them is going to heal the other four up to full, you're going to waste a lot of damage. Like, yes, I understand don't, you know, don't use CDs in that situation, but sometimes it's not always possible to prevent that, right? Uh, so I feel like it's really suboptimal to, to let mobs heal each other, even if it means CCing one mob. So effectively you're fighting five mobs, then four mobs. Whereas if you did it the other way, you'd be fighting four mobs, then one mob. And and I think that's just better, right? I don't know. So we had this discussion pretty uh, pretty publicly on live stream in the comments section of other videos. That's the way I feel about it. But, you know, if you're fighting small packs, packs with mobs that are not very dangerous, you don't really need to worry about CCing because, you know, those mobs aren't really going to... There's not really any danger to letting them heal, first of all. And that's another thing. There's a lot of danger to letting these mobs heal. You do not want mobs to be healing up if they're doing dangerous mechanics. You want to avoid fighting them, right? It should be a lot easier uh, if you can just kill them or either CC them outright, something like that. So, 
Yeah, the more mobs you fight, the more dangerous, especially on a teeming fortified week. But as you see, this room is going to embody the main problems with it. There are so many mobs in this room. Oh my god. Have a look around as we start pulling. It is unbelievable. There are an enormous amount of mobs in this room. Like, I'm talking about double what there normally is. And uh, again, I really don't think there's a way around it. I love to just say, let's pull the boss and ignore all this trash. But you really do need the count like this is the thing with teaming man like you can't really skip a lot and you know these mobs don't give a ton but you need a lot of trash to complete some of these dungeons and this room especially is very problematic i would say one of the the bigger baits out there in the game right now where it's like all right skip all this trash pull the boss and then as soon as he goes does this tantrum he aggroes like seven things and we're going to actually aggro even more things right now and i think we I think we might wipe to it. I'm not sure if I remember correctly. It's, I've done this so many times, but this is a dangerous situation here. These flowers are really dangerous. They're the ones that are going to put the stun out on the group. It's basically a disease that can either be healed off or just dispelled if you could dispel disease. Or, of course, you could just interrupt, stun, prevent the cast in the first place. That is obviously what you want to do. But you see it's on two players now. Looks like we're getting it off pretty quickly because we have two classes that can do it. I'm pretty sure Priest and Paladin can take diseases off. So if that's the case, then this is a great comp for this. But... I did it earlier in the week and later in the week with druids, and druids cannot get diseases off. So pretty much uh, we were just sitting there, the mobs are uh, stunned, or the people are stunned forever. No interrupts, taking tons of damage, and uh, we're just not, yeah, we're just not progressing through the packs. So it's a very, very, very dangerous room. If things get out of control here, these mobs are going to really terrorize you right here. The ones that charge to a person, and I have to say, it is so frustrating when people... Are being charged to and they're just running around in circles it's like guys i understand you're taking a lot of damage the mob is dangerous it's meleeing you but guess what you're running around in circles and nobody can effectively attack it we're putting down slows we're putting down aoe's that are not even hitting it you're running it all around and it's really not that dangerous on this week it does a lot of melee damage and all you gotta do is kick that cast to prevent a lot of the extra damage but you're never really going to actually put real distance between yourself and the mob. And that is the thing. The mob charges and, uh, you know, it has a lot of pesky elements to it. So if you're just running around in circles, it's charging at you. You're not actually putting distance on it. You're actually just wasting a lot of DPS. Like a lot of time is being wasted on that pack. And uh, it makes it dangerous. It makes me not want to pull big here. And of course, with teaming and fortified, you don't really want to pull any bigger than you have to anyway. But, you know, these mobs are pretty much everything in here is, is more dangerous than it should be. And a lot of that is just because people are unwilling to kind of, uh, you know, interrupt or stun at the right times or deal with mechanics. You see these at the right times. And uh, it's luckily we had a pretty good group in that regard. I think we did a good job here typically. But, you know, sometimes, especially in other keys I did this week here, this place, this room is just a ball breaker, man. I'm telling you, the most annoying room in the game. So here we have two of these little bat mobs and they're both going to charge to different people whatever and look at the hunters over there watch what happens see this is what i'm saying so we just aggroed even more trash because this guy's just running around in circles while these things are, are chasing him like you know charging over to him really not even putting any real distance to him and now we aggro more mobs and it becomes even more dangerous so here we go the hardest room Maybe not, but definitely one of the rooms that is the most pesky. A lot of complicated mob types, and uh, you really just got to interrupt, guys. I'm telling you, as many interrupts and CCs, uh, like you know, hard CCs, not actual... You know, I, I don't mean hard CCs. I mean like actual stuns, stuns, disorients, grips, knockbacks, anything like that got to be used in this room. Please do not enter this dungeon without that healthy appreciation for just how hard this room can actually be. So I think one of the best exercises of learning that anybody could do from this video is just to see how much time we actually spend in this room. On average, I feel like I'm spending way over 10 minutes in this room. It's a single room with a single boss in it, and we are spending almost a quarter, if not closer to half, of the actual duration of the dungeon's timer in one room. This is ridiculous. I think teaming is way overboard in this room, and uh, I, I, let, let me know. If you guys know of a solution, let me know. But I, the only options I see are to either skip mobs and have to get lucky or deal with the boss in a way that are, is going to facilitate not having to pull as much mobs or to just uh, pull larger. And I just can't seem to do it. Every time I try, people die. People don't interrupt. People don't stun. People don't, you know, knock back whatever. And uh, it just causes all kinds of problems. So I don't know. But 
The boss itself is extremely easy. Another one that I feel like on a Fortified is just a pushover. But if you don't do the mechanics right, you're going to always struggle. I'm telling you, uh, one of the best things that you can do is to bait this charge in a single direction. We don't do it in this video. But what I've done in the past, especially on uh, Tyrannical Weeks, is have everybody stack in one location so we know exactly where the boss is going. All the little bugs are in one small area and we can quickly get them uh, taken care of without losing a ton of DPS by the charge uh, going all the way across the room. So anyway, after 100 energy is reached, he's going to perform his tantrum ability, which is going to then shoot bugs all out around the room. And this is why you want to pull the trash. You can, I, I'm sure there's ways that you can benefit uh, from not pulling the trash, but like you're going to see in the rest of the dungeon, we're not even close to being done with count. We spent this much time in this room and we still have tons of count that we need. It is unbelievable. Teaming is ridiculous. I'm telling you, I think it might be the hardest to fix set to upgrade keys on because I cannot even get over just how much time we spent on trash this week. I can't even get over, it. especially because of the count being elevated in such a way. So I think they're dead serious about trying to make five mans a real deal. And they, they, you know, they, they're not satisfied seeing people do like forties. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I, I just don't think they want it, but regardless, you could also just ignore the bugs. The problem is if you ignore the bugs and they pull trash, you also wipe. So one way or the other, it's, it's all bad, right? But, uh, okay. So we're done with the first half of the dungeon. We have four minutes left guys. I don't even want to tell you it's ridiculous i can't i can't even get over how this timer is uh so tight but we actually do really well in the second half of this dungeon to the point where i'm like yo we're not that far away from making this timer so don't despair if you get here with uh you know seemingly very little time left you're not that far away you got a lot of bosses uh you know two bosses and, and some trash ahead of you but it's all downhill from here once you get through that room once you get past those first two rooms you're ready to rock man the dungeon opens up it gets a lot easier a lot less trash a lot uh, higher volume of uh, mechanical awareness but you know single pulls so it's, it doesn't take nearly as long to dispatch it especially on fortified weeks so as always uh, you can mind control that mob i do it it causes some problems i don't know if it happens in this video i think i'm actually going to try to dismiss it because i think i know all about it it seems like this mob every time i grab one of these mobs it ends up aggroing something else in the dungeon it always happens here i don't know what you guys are thinking about this uh if you've seen it in in practice but i'm trying to pull things back and you know it's just i don't know it's, it's not working maybe it does in this uh instance but typically if we fight the mobs where they stand uh, the the MC mob will like aggro that pack on the right, and that's actually not that big of a deal on some weeks. But you know, it's not something you want to have happen on a fortified key where we're already struggling, and, and it's actually not that bad of an idea to get that pack for count, or to even just skip the left and go right instead. You skip two, uh, like three dangerous mobs really, but. The pack in front of the boss is the one that we really need to discuss and the one that, uh, again, teaming is absolutely making into a nightmare now. I don't know what's going on with Plater there. It's got like a candy cane look to it. I'm not really sure. But anyway, I, I mind control the mob. I uh, used it for a, a pack or two and now I'm just going to kill it because I've had some bad experiences here where uh, this pack on the right is going to aggro for some reason. But the main reason I kill it there is because we want to mind control on this next pack. You really, uh, I feel like you need to on this next pack. It's a really, really dangerous pack. You're going to see it soon. But... Again, anytime you're fighting these worms, just please interrupt, guys, okay? You could stun them as well. I don't think there's any other way to prevent them. You can't really knock them back. I don't think you could do anything else. But you just got to interrupt them as much as possible because the more they cast, the more the damage from the cast does. So, anyway, that guy's going to whiff on a trap, but mostly because of my uh, antics. I, I go and mind control the mob he was trying to trap. And it's for the best. We don't really need uh, actual hard CC here. Uh, if we were going to hard CC anything, it would be the infested mob again, in my opinion. But the mob cannot be CC'd. So another big thing that I see happen all the time is they drop these spirit drain totems. They can be killed, but you can just move away from them, okay? So if you're going to fight this pack and you're going to do it like this, just move away from the totems. It's not that serious. But again, as you see, no CC on key targets. And of course, we don't let uh, we don't stop the infested mobs from getting to the target. So, yeah, we pretty much wipe because of that. I don't know if we actually wipe, but uh, I think we probably get really close to doing so. But yeah, infested is just not something that you want to mess around with. Like you can you can pull and people are arguing that it's actually faster to do it. I don't know. We'll we'll leave that up to you guys, all right? But all I'll say is you're opening up yourself to a lot of difficulty. You're adding artificial difficulty where there doesn't need to be any. CCing is not that slow. People are like, oh, it takes forever to CC. 
that's a problem with the person CCing. I, I, what do you want me to say? You know what I mean? It's not actually that hard to just press a CC ability. Like, surely it can be done, right? It doesn't have to be a 20 second ordeal. You don't have to have all these mobs marked. You don't have to be talking to the person to be able to get it done every pack. It's really not that difficult. And especially on teaming week, I just, I don't know. Like, you see what's happening here. This is all because uh, we're, we're just not focused on the right things. And, uh, you know, this key is not obviously the best group, but... We could have done this. We could have really done this. Like I said, we it looked like it was just over when we got into that second room, but we uh, we fly through the second half even with these mistakes. So I'm going to show you guys two very interesting mistakes. That that was one of them, honestly. You just really got to be aware of the infested mobs, and we just weren't. You know, we didn't have the right uh, abilities set up. Uh, but as you see here, showing back the run back, it is unbelievable. I can't even get over it. They really, I have to believe they did it on purpose. At this point, I don't understand the justification for it. And there's a couple dungeons that are like this. But this one is without question the worst. Just because of the start of the dungeon being so difficult. So, uh, regardless, we managed to kill everything else, I guess. So, that's good. We just got this infested mob left. Uh, the actual mob I mind controlled is dead too, I guess, somehow. I don't know. But anyway. Um, yeah. So, just be aware. This mob, you know, the mobs around this area, they just need a lot of interrupts. And you could purge the skeletons. They do a shield. Uh, Death Knight can't do it. Demon Hunter tank can. Otherwise, Priest, Shaman, etc. can do it. Uh, Arcane Torrent will get rid of it as well. So you just want to try to get these shields off as quick as possible. Deal with this trash in the smartest way possible. And then it's time for what I believe to be the one of the harder bosses in the game. This boss is incredibly, uh, you know, it, it requires a lot of knowledge of uh, the mechanics. Let's put it that way. And the biggest mistake I see people make all the time is the people who get the uh, fire debuff, they run into a very, very poor area. Or they do what that guy just did there. I don't know. I don't see any value to it, especially so early in the fight. But it is one option to uh, go run around and clear them yourself. Now, as a tank, I think you really want to position yourself in a way that you're going to clear, you know, at least half of these mushrooms every time. But as a Death Knight tank, you have the very big benefit of anti-magic shell. It's going to carry on this fight in multiple ways. Uh, anytime you run over a mushroom, it's going to put a debuff on, and that is obviously something you don't want. So you can AMS the debuff, and it will not get applied. And this, of course, makes the rest of the group love you because you've basically just removed a debuff from them as well. Now, the other thing that I've done to some success with AMS is instead if things are like way out of control and you can't possibly get all of them with a single AMS you could use AMS to prevent when he actually puts the stacks on everybody so instead typically you get the stack you run over the mushroom or he does the mechanic he casts the ability and he puts the stacks volatile pods whatever he puts the festering harvest there it is he's going to put stacks on you for every mushroom there is but if you AMS that, you could actually solo save the boss. And I didn't, I've done this a couple times now, uh, especially this week. People, uh, you know, they're just not where they need to be on this fight. And these mushrooms are out of control. Uh, but really, if you have lust and you have good burst single target, especially on fortified, you should have no problems with this fight. It's really only a problem on Tyrannical. So again, another one of those fights that gets really, really complicated on Tyrannical. Now here, you're going to notice our count is very odd, but I do want to show something very interesting. Uh, again, this mob here is it's going to be another one of those worm mobs, and uh, you're going to want to try to stun it, interrupt it, blah, blah, blah. Don't let it cast. But there's also that patrol over there, which, uh, oh yeah, so we're talking about what we're going to skip from now on. So we do need a little bit more count, but we didn't skip in the beginning, right? So, so let's get back to this conversation, because I was really... I had my heart set on skipping in the beginning, right? I thought it was the right choice, and, uh, you know, we, we saw it burn us a couple times this week. Ends up being the wrong choice. But this uh, pack here can be skipped without Shroud. Now, there's an extra worm right there. You see it? The, the blood pool on the ground. You can skip that uh, typically without Shroud anyway. But you can actually Shroud all the way to these last two mobs, and these are going to give us the perfect count that we need. So we really didn't lose anything by not skipping the start. We, if, you know, we wiped multiple times, we wouldn't have been able to get by those without Shroud again, or maybe an Invispot or something, and uh, I think this is just better. So again, you're going to see the, the dungeon tool, you know, showing the actual count on teaming. You really need almost everything. So if you're going to skip a lot out of the start, and, and you know, that's great if you're sure you're not going to die, but it's like... If you're going to skip a lot of the start, you're going to need a lot of extra count. And I just don't really know where to get it. You know, we did it later in the week and it was just a complete mess. We ended up just dying going back to the start and getting more mobs because it was like, we, there's just not enough mobs here. Like, we have to pull some really bad packs just to get this count. So it almost wasn't even worth it. And uh, I think you'll probably find that to be the case no matter when you do this, no matter what teaming was. Uh, skipping at the start seems great, but 
you're going to put yourself in a bit of a hole and uh, you know whether it's not whether it's worth it is, is questionable now so this is probably not something that's going to be very obvious but i'm going to explain to you why we just got uh completely uh we just got in a really bad position so one of the players died okay and then the healer got taken down by the the suction or whatever it took us down so I think that is something that everybody should know. Uh, it's, you know, whatever. It kind of glossed over in the actual visuals of the video. But I want you guys to be aware of that. If you die in that pack and the healer is going to res you, make sure he is not standing close to that door. Because that door is not optional. Once it opens, you will get taken down. Unless you're far enough away from it that it won't happen. So just something to be aware of. But otherwise, this fight is actually way harder than I expected it to be on this week. And that's because of quacking. It really is nuts. Uh, stacking up in this light and then quacking happens, you're pretty much done. But we had some uh, varying degrees of difficult difficulty with this fight this week. And this uh, group did a pretty good job with it. But typically, I, I really like seeing a lot cleared every week. Uh, people are standing in that for way too long and they're ass kicked by that mechanic. But... You know, clearing uh, the paths around the boss is pretty interesting. Well, what we saw in the beta was if everybody stacks up, the this one ad is always going to spawn right next to you. It's going to get nuked. It's going to get killed real quick, right? Really good cleave off and on to the bosses as well. And then you just bait the breath and kill these little spores in a way that there's only ever going to be stuff around you. And then you stand with the light on it or in it and clear it. So you basically drop it, clear it, drop it, clear it, and you never have to move. This is like the min-max strategy. I think this is like the way that you would do it if you were like a robot instead of a human being. Unfortunately, I'm not a robot. and I'm a human being, as you can tell. So we're just going to move around the room. It's not that much worse, but it, you know, it does hurt your DPS a lot. It gives you a bad situation because you're constantly having these spores kind of funnel into the room. And you don't really want to constantly be dealing with them. If they were all coming from one area, it would be a lot easier to deal with, is my point. But regardless, this fight is actually really easy on Fortified. Quacking makes it a little bit hard to stack up, but realistically with Fortified, you don't even really need to clear the debuff every time. The healer could just deal with it. So anyway, after all that, you know, it wasn't that long. It wasn't, we weren't that far away. Even after the mistake, you know, the, the res there, that really killed us. We wasted a lot of time on that res. If we didn't have that or, or some of the other mistakes that we detailed, uh, we probably would have upgraded But there you go. 390 trinket so how can you go wrong with that i don't know thanks for watching uh, i actually really like this dungeon and you know the, the problems that we detailed in this dungeon are, are, are part of its charm to be honest i think it's pretty unique so i don't know how you guys feel about the uh, the odd uh, for the fact that there's pretty much no checkpoints and um you know there's that shortcut that we shot we shot on stream a couple times it's pretty interesting but it's really not gonna help you skip much you still can't skip the beginning so i don't know thanks for watching let me know what you guys think otherwise we will see you guys in the next one